Hi everybody, welcome to Pinky Tech. My name is Joe, and today we're upgrading the OptiBeast. What? I named it. Okay, today we're upgrading the OptiPlex that we bought from Upcycle Computer Works, and we've got a couple of upgrades. So first and foremost, I told you there'd be an SSD. There's an SSD. And if you don't remember me telling you there would be an SSD, it's probably because you didn't see the first video, in which case you should go watch that. It'll be linked up here somewhere, probably. I don't know, YouTube gets funny with banner. But anyway, so first upgrade today we have an SSD. So this is an Inland Professional. Uh, it's a 240 gig or 256 gig, so 240 gig class. Um, yeah, it says $70 on there, but no, we didn't pay that. We picked this up for 30 bucks. This is really going to dramatically increase performance on this computer. Not so much for gaming, but for just everyday tasks, trying to boot the computer, trying to load your video games, etc. So this was first and foremost on the list. Now, if you don't recall, the Optiplex had a 500 gig standard hard drive in there. This is only a 240 gig drive, so we're not gonna be able to clone that data over to the new drive. Uh, so we will have to do a fresh install of Windows. I've made a video on how to install Windows, so I'm not going to do that in this video, but you can check out that video here-ish. So, um, But to go along with this 240 gig drive, we've got this one terabyte, it's 7200 RPM Western Digital Drive. Uh, this would be great for just bulk storage. We are going to put the video games on here as well. So that means a very fast and responsive operating system and a lot of storage to hold. Um, well, it's a terabyte, so you'll be just about able to get Call of Duty Warzone on there. All right, for the second upgrade, we have RAM. So we only needed eight gigs of RAM. There are four slots inside this motherboard. However, I was able to find a 16 gig kit of Corsair Vengeance RAM. Um, this is DDR3, it is a 16 gig kit. So we're gonna be pulling out the eight gig that is in there and put these in. Now with this extra system RAM, once again, system will be more responsive, it'll work better, but we should also be able to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone. So I'm looking forward to benchmarking that this time. All right, and for the last upgrade today, and I guess maybe the most difficult, even though it's not really that difficult, a lot of people are scared about doing it, would be the processor. So I was able to pick up an i7-3770. Uh, this is a four core, eight thread processor versus the i5-3540 that's currently in the system, which is a four core processor. No uh, additional hyper threading on that processor. Now with the additional core count that we're getting in this, we should be able to one, play more additional video games. Uh, the computer will work faster, stuff like that. That's a given, but we might even be able to get away with a little bit of streaming here. So we're gonna test that out as well in the benchmarks and see what we get. All right, so as far as price on here, I promised you guys it would be going about two to $250 at a time. Well, I was able to pick up this processor and the RAM for $90 here locally. That is, Probably a little bit better of a deal than what you would find normally on a processor and 16 gigs of RAM. However, if you're looking for the processor by itself, it's about 60 to $70 on eBay. And the eight gigs of RAM that I told you that you could pick up before was about $30. So eh, it's about the same price if you're really looking at it there. So not too much of a difference there. Once again, if you can find local deals and especially on bundles that people are giving away, um, it really just helps out tremendously when you're trying to put together a budget system. As for the storage, we were able to get both of these for $30 a piece, uh, which is about market value. The terabyte SSD actually may cost you as much as $50 if you're buying new, but if you are picking it up secondhand, you can get one for 30 or 40 bucks. Like I said, if you wanted to just purchase all new, I got these at Micro Center, about $80, but they're equivalents that you can find on Amazon for about the same price. So looking at $80, $70 for a processor that takes us to 150, along with 30 for the RAM would be $180 all total for this round of upgrades. All right, and without further ado, let's get to installing the upgrades and then we'll run some benchmarks. All right, so I got the Optiplex here and I've got the side panel off of it. And we have three upgrades. We have the CPU, we have the RAM, and we have the hard drive that we're gonna be replacing. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the CPU and get that done first. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so I can get to this pen and this RAM is a little bit high on the connectors here. And so I have big hands and it's just easier if I do that first and then we can go with the RAM. And lastly, we'll hit the hard drive. So to get started here, what we're gonna do first is remove the CPU cooler. And that is just removing these four screws right here. 
and then this connector right here. So we'll get that off and then that'll allow us to remove the CPU and place the new one in. So let's get started. Okay, and after a brief uh, fight with the heatsink cooler and getting some thermal paste off, we're ready to put our new CPU in. And all you're gonna do is match the gold notch on this processor to the notch specified on the socket and drop it in. And it should drop in and secure without any force. And you will put the bracket down and then use the arm and push forward and lock the arm. And next things next is to put a little bit of thermal paste on here. I do use the P method. There's a thousand different methods. I'm not going to argue the validity, but I've always done this and always had good temperature. So that's what we're going to stick with. So about the size of a P give or take. That's it. And then we're going to replace this heat sink back down. And then of course you want to make sure this connector goes towards the opening there. And we're gonna tighten them down in a cross pattern. All right, once they're all started a little bit, it's time to go ahead and tighten them all down. Once again, stick with the cross pattern, but just keep in mind, once it stops, don't try to like crank down on it. You don't really have to put that much force. Okay, and once all the screws have been tightened, the last thing to do is to plug the fan connector back in. And RAM is one of the simplest upgrades you can do. You're simply gonna push the notch on each side of the DIM module down. That'll pop the RAM up. And then you're just gonna line the new uh, DIM in uh, using the same spot. Push down to you hear a click. Once again, we're going to line this up and we're going to push down firmly on both sides until we hear it click. All right, all done two thirds of the way here. All right, so the last thing to do is to replace the hard drive and we can do that by removing this one first. So we're going to remove the SATA data cable as well as the power cable. All right, and on this Optiplex, this hard drive just slides right out if you push these in. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this hard drive out, set it to the side. We're gonna get our one terabyte hard drive, the three and a half inch. And we're gonna go ahead and put that in. And to do that, there are holes on the hard drive. You're just gonna line them up inside of these notches on the carrier. There we go. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. All right, there we go. So that's installed. And then for the SSD, I'm actually gonna take, I'm gonna tape that one up here. So I'll get some tape in just a moment to put that on, but I'll show you what it looks like here. All right, so as you can see, these cables don't give you a whole lot of room here. So we should be fine though. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this on. As you can see, I want it to orient like this, that way the power connectors are on the same side. All right, so with that connected, all we need to do is put a SATA cable here. Now, you could take, and there's SATA connections down here, and you could run that across. However, I don't use my DVD, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually steal the SATA connector from this DVD player, and I'm just gonna route that over to our new connection here. Let's better cable manage this. Let's pull this back through. We can run it through here as well. And we can hide the excess in the bay. And ta-da. 
All right, guys, so that is it for the upgrades. We've got our hard drives installed, we've got our RAM installed, and we've got our CPU installed. So I'm gonna boot this up, get Windows on it, and then it'll be time to start some gaming and run some benchmarks and see what performance we got for the upgrades we made. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the gaming montage there. It was uh, fun to put together, but as you can see inside of the benchmarks that we were doing there, Heaven, uh, CSGO, pretty much everything showed across the board about a 10% performance increase. So that was very good to see in there. In addition, uh, you also saw that we benchmarked Modern Warfare. Those were on medium settings, so it was a little under 50 FPS in some spots, but that's something we can certainly tinker with the settings and get it up well over uh, the 60 FPS mark that we were targeting. In addition to the gaming benchmarks that were in there, hopefully you saw on there also not only the FPS, but the processor. So once again, we were running OBS to kind of capture the game footage on there, and the processor was no longer pegged out at 100%. Most of the time it stayed under 50, but certainly under 75%, which means you probably could do some streaming. Speaking of streaming, I did say that I was going to benchmark that for us as well, but quite frankly, I just haven't had time and I wanted to be able to get this video out to show the next set of upgrades for this Optiplex. So hopefully you guys will be able to see in the future, I am going to try to actually stream out of this, 
hopefully within the next day or so. And then I'll put that up on the YouTube channel as well so that you can check that out if you are indeed wanting to get into streaming but may not have the resources. All right, if you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. That helps me out tremendously. And make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll see the next set of upgrades coming as well. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.